over this past couple of seasons. But this next 80 minutes will tell whether he's been proved right or not. We've had a couple of late changes in the Great Britain side. Originally selected, Alan Tate is out at fullback with a hamstring trouble, but no problem. Steve Hampson, very experienced player. And nice to see Paul Newlove there, but also at number nine, Paul Hume. He hasn't hooked since that historic third test win in Australia, but he's in there for Bob Beardmore. Beardmore still suffering with a bruised shoulder. A lot of problems, but the national anthem's just about to be played by the band. Good roar from the crowd, the formality's over, and the New Zealand side just showing one change from that which shocked Great Britain last week. Wiggins, Adrian Shelford back in at number eight in the place of the injured James Goulding. And I'm sure the Kiwis will once again perform the hacker, this time for the Yorkshire crowd here at Elland Road Leeds. It seems to get them worked up, this hacker, Alec, doesn't it? Well, it's supposed to be a traditional wall cry, Ray, and uh, let's hope uh, that it has the other effects today, because last week it was devastating. Adrian Shelford there, the big, burly number eight, the Wigan prop, had serious groin trouble this last couple of weeks. Very difficult to get rid of. And Sam Stewart, what a fine game he had at Old Trafford last Saturday. Newcastle Knights captain in Australia and I think before the hacker Mr McCallum wants to get the tossing up formalities out of the way Mike Gregory we understand he's had a little leg injury that's been niggling in training Mr McCallum 32 years of age four years in the Sydney first grade and had a very good game last Saturday so Sam Stewart the Kiwi number 12 to lead the hacker. looking faces there Alan. yes and there is and there's some very serious looking faces it was nice to see the great britain lads um, just watching in amazement so uh, let's hope that doesn't happen all afternoon ray yes and a very nervous time for this great britain side a lot of problems last week criticized for the defensive lapses the number of drop passes that were made and really a lack of organization let's hope that this man sean edwards for one i'm very pleased to see him right from the side of the kickoff let's hope that he can organize the midfield that was so desperate last week 
sure Coach Mulrini done an awful lot of work, awful lot of preparation. And Paul Lachlan, Great Britain, St Helens number four gets us underway. Darrell Williams using the wings already, Alec. They certainly used these wings last week, didn't they? Yes, again, and uh, they use them to gain yardage. Uh, but the interesting thing about this game, with Ray, will be how much yardage is made by the side playing with the wind. And at this moment in time, Great Britain has got the wind, and that's going to be very important. And uh, I think uh, two forwards there, Roy Power, number 12, from Leeds, and Paul Hume, number nine, brought in specially for the tackling, and they'll certainly need to put this man down, Adrian Shelford. And Mr McCallum, very insistent that people don't lie on the tackle player. So, kick to Darrell Williams. Not too much ground gain, but at least in rugby league, the ball retained by the kick inside. Brent Todd. New Zealand, one test up in this British Cold series. And already, Alec, a sense that the Great Britain are moving up quicker. Yes, uh, obviously, they've got to be a lot keener. They, they realise that they can't afford to let people run, and especially this fellow now, uh, this man, he's a very, very good player. What Great Britain have got to do is not be too keen. So, Sam Stewart. Youngster, 18 years old, centre Paul Newlove. Mercer again. And Great Britain really did let... These two wingmen run far too much in field. They set up attacks, they set up positions last week. This number five, Mercer, and number two, Iro. The sixth tackle, Kelly Shelford, that's a good one. The wind swirling. Hampson's underneath it, all well done by Hampson. Well, that was stupid. And he sent Hampson off. Absolutely stupid in a test match. Hampson had collected the ball. If he'd stayed and stood his ground behind the dead ball line, then that would have been a tap-out. He lost his temper, he became frustrated, and he butted the New Zealand player. And Mr McCallum, no hesitation, off goes Hampson. Well, what a start for Great Britain. Can you believe what Stevie Hampson does here? This is indiscipline, very, very bad he gets. Look at that. There is no need for that any time of the game. And certainly, Freeman looks a little worse for worse. Steve Hampson, I think, was very frustrated, upset at, uh, at this man holding him, and I think he wanted to get to the 25-yard line as quick as possible and tap the ball. But as far as we can see, it looks as if he's been sent off. Certainly, referee Mr McCallum never lifted his hand up to signify 10 minutes to the sin bin Alex so it, well there's it been no be there's been no card and normally for 10 minutes in the sin bin the card is brought out I think Malcolm really will be absolutely furious and rightly so that was indiscipline at the highest level and I think uh, we've got uh, Mike Gregory in fact asking uh, Mr McCallum there was it a sin bin or was it off but it's certainly off and what a handicap, Alec, in a test match. Well, you just can't believe it. You certainly said at test matches, they always have surprises in store. I don't think anybody could believe this was going to happen. So, Kurt Sherlock, who didn't have too much luck with the kick in the swirling winds at Old Trafford. He's got some very, very powerful winds moving around here. Not quite the gale force winds that we were promised by the weather forecasters. But a tricky kick, nevertheless. Kurt Sherlock. And he's missed it. Now that's a bad miss. So, Great Britain let off the two points, but already a man down. And what a handicap. One down in the series, and only 12 men. And I think what you're going to have to see now, really, Ray, is, is really the commitment of the other Great Britain players because somebody's going to have to share the workload and share it a lot. So, Great Britain, Paul Hume moving in there now. Great Britain tackling very well, but of course, it's how long can these, uh, these forwards keep going? They're moving into New Zealand.
Kiwi, Sam Stewart driving in. Paul Lachlan moves to the full-back position and, of course, it means a forward will have to come out of the pack. Shelford. Phil Ford. Stepping around, Ali, but not really going anywhere. No, I think a lot of people are going to have to ask a question today. Uh, Phil Ford, you know, he didn't do a lot last week and he's got to run more with the ball. But Great Britain, really, they've got an uphill task and what they've got to do is have a good start and put some points on the board very quickly. So, Lachlan, good kick to touch and I would expect Lachlan to be kicking the goals this, this Saturday. David Hume to Travis Gerrit. Had a good first test debut. One of the few. Mike Gregory. Great Britain criticised for the short passing, driving the ball in midfield. And already we can see Mike Gregory well as captain. He should be, be keeping the order, not dashing in. Again, very upset with this little man Freeman. I would think that Mal really has laid plans to keep this boy Freeman quiet. He certainly ran the roost last week. I think and he might be the problem though, Roy. I think he is the culprit this time. He had a little bit of a, a niddle and, um, you know, he, that could be a very costly penalty, especially with Paul Lachlan kicking goals. Yes, he certainly was, Alec. He was interfering at the, uh, at the play of the ball. He's a fiery little customer. Started out originally with the North Coast Tigers side in New Zealand. So, a chance for Lachlan. So, Paul Lachlan, 37 yards out to the right of the posts. And if anything, this wind swirling around now. In fact, it seems to have turned round and it's it's facing Lachlan now. And getting stronger. But a powerful kicker, six foot two. Good 14 stones behind the kick. And 43 goals this season. And Great Britain need a bit of luck at the start. Oh, that's a bad one. That's a very bad one, but you could see the wind taking the ball away. Very difficult for these kickers. But again, Alec, defenders in there, aren't they? Yes, there is, and uh, this is going to be interesting early on now. It looks like Great Britain have uh, took to heed everything that was criticised about not tackling. I just hope they don't get a little bit too keen. Shelford. A lot expected of this Wigan prop. Number eight for the Kiwis. To Brent Todd. Again, another man with experience here of playing in the Yorkshire at Wakefield Trinity that's a good ball to Shelford it was significant last week Alec and he looks the same this week Gary Freeman putting these long passes out to open the game out to yes, Shelford and not being afraid to spread the load and uh, this is what New Zealand do they've got a very very good game plan and look at that that tells you the strength of the wing from one end of the field to the other Lachlan sensibly leaving the kick because of course a tap on the 25 yard line Roy Powell at home here in Leeds the Leeds second row number 12 Edwards first time we've seen Sean Edwards in this match both sides miss penalties nil nil Andy Platts played second row last week moved up into the prop position but has got experience with Wigan in the prop it's a good way. Great Britain still keeping this ball close, still keeping this ball amongst the forwards. Edwards. That looked a high tackle. Yes, Mr. McCallum spotted it. A high tackle, definitely against Kurt Sorensen. Get your tacklings down, and he's a fearsome character, this lad. Only five foot nine, but 16 stones packed into that frame very experienced player 
what I just can't understand here. What is the difference between a stiff arm tackle, and this certainly was, and uh, what he's just done to Stevie Hansen? He's not even put him in the sim bin, and how lucky can people be? Well, thankfully, Sean Edwards fit again. Lachlan. Good kick. Great Britain, six tackles, six keepers. To Platt. That's a good switch to Skerritt. And again, well, I think there was a high tackle there. Skelvin Skerritt lost the ball. He's protesting to referee Mr McCallum, but David Hume, sensibly, I think, and wisely, getting the players away. And there's certainly a lot of niggle going on between these two scrum, aren't they? This well, there is. You've got to expect it. This is a very, very important test match. I just thought, that, you know, this is it again, Ian. I've just watched, look at the head-eye tackling. Number 12, Sam Stewart. To Mercer. In again. In fact, these two wings seem to take the ball more than the standoff. Yes, they, they play uh, yardage, and it's very important that every time they do it, they make a lot of yards. But New Zealand not really going anywhere, not really showing that free-flowing style that they did at Old Trafford, being clamped down here in the middle. But, of course, we mustn't forget Steve Hampson off the field and how he will go in that second half with only 12 men is problematical. Freeman looking for support, McGann. Oh, that's a bad one. Off his knee, Mr McCallum signifies that wasn't a knock-on. Edwards again. Trying to break up play from the acting half back position. Good way. Again, though, Ray, just looking at the Great Britain style, it just looks as though it's one man football. There's not a lot of support play, and there's not a lot of people when they get the ball, look who they can pass it to. They've certainly got to move this ball. A fire standing on the left wing out there. He's the ball, this is good. Mike Gregory to a fire. Now He's beaten him, Andy Goodway to the line. Oh, that should have been a try. If a fire had passed the ball, it would have been a try. The sixth tackle, now then, out wide. Oh, Platt elected to dummy. It's lost, it's New Zealand. And what a let off there for the Kiwis. Great Britain had a try begging. If a fire had passed inside, if Platt hadn't dummy. But that's Test Rugby, Alec, isn't it? Yes, but, you, can, you know, you can't miss uh, tries like that in international level, and that should have been six points without any problem from Martin Afire and from Andy Goodway. And the Kiwis sensibly playing it in the pack, taking it away to the short side, settling the game down again. They panicked. Shelford to Williams. Good tackle from Afire. This is difficult ball to take in the wind. Very difficult there for Dean Bell as a three-quarter. The wind taking the ball away from your grasp. Kiwi forwards. Offside. Well supported by Ford. Gregory needs a good lead now from this uh, Warrington skipper and Great Britain skipper Platt again Alec though it's, it's forwards going in ones isn't it the, yes it isn't? does and when you see what that little short ball Sean Edwards did to Gregory you know it makes you wonder why we do play the ball down the middle we've got pace on the outside two good young centres and we're still playing it down the middle Hume that's a good kick sensible kick Punishing kick. Good play by David Hume, keeping the Kiwis pegged in the corners, pushing them back to the line. This is it now. What, what make Gregory here now? Martin of fire. Now look at here. Should he have passed? Is he a little bit greedy? 
He still gets the ball. Look at Andy Goodway. All he's got to do is run. What's he looking forward? Round for? Nobody knows. And a try goes begging. So the Kiwis, the ball from the scrum. Just 15 minutes gone, still no score, but of course, the important factor, Great Britain down to 12 men, Steve Hampson sent off there in those shock opening minutes. But Great Britain certainly had all the pressure. Great Britain bringing a fire inside. Taking a leaf out of the Kiwi coach, Tony Gordon's plans. Skerritt. Well, that looked high again, and it is. But certainly, I would think that's the second time we've had a high tackle. And I think he's quite correct. This time, it's a sin bin. Ten minutes sin bin here. For Dwayne Mann, the Kiwi hooker. And a bit of a wild man, I think, with a tackle like that. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about this. Dwayne Mann, the New Zealand hooker, look at that. He nearly decapitates him, never mind, goes for the sim bin. So, Dwayne Mann, a ten-minute spell at the side. And this should be an easy goal for Lachlan. Already missed with one, but not with this one. Great Britain, two. New Zealand, nil. Brings a smile to Lachlan's face. And I think, uh, Alec, that Great Britain have got to really make use of this ten minutes now while we're down to 12 men each. Well, last week in uh, the first test raid, that when one of the Great Britain lads were sim-binned, uh, New Zealand ran in two tries. Now, can Great Britain do the same thing? Two points, a good start, but there's a tremendous uh, breeze blowing down the field. New Zealand's got the rain and the wind in their favour, so Great Britain can be pleased with that start. Forward, well taken. Great Britain driving more from the acting half back position, pushing the Kiwis back to Powell. Not quite through. So both sides now down to, to 12 men, lacking Hampson and Mann. Good run from Platt, but there's no support. That's where the half back should be coming. He's better to Skerritt. Good run by Skerritt. And these Great Britain forwards finding the gaps. Well, a good kick by Edwards in the end, but I think really, Alec, Edwards was looking for players coming up from deep, wasn't yes, he? Yes, I think the problem's going to be now, who's going to be the runners, Ray? Because we're a man short, we've got Paul Lachlan at the full-back, but New Zealand can be open with the short ball, taking the ball to the New Zealand and just slipping it short. The Kiwi scrum, Freeman. That's a good tackle by Goodway. Goodway playing in the backs there now. Moved out of the pack to cover for Hampson. Dean Bell. Certainly a different attitude and resolve in this Great Britain tide. Tackling better. New Zealand one up in the series. Well, <laughs> slight argument there. And Mercer again. He likes to come in field. Very rarely does he stay out on that left wing. Both sides playing for position. And good support of the kicker there, Alec. Yes, there is. And uh, you've got to say about the tactics of the New Zealand. I mean, surely they must realise that if they keep the ball down into the Great Britain half, they've got the wind and the rain, and, uh, and Great Britain's got a man short. Well, of course, New Zealand got Dwayne Manoff at the moment. Great Britain got to take advantage. 
Roy Powell. Lachlan electing to run. Finds himself trapped. The sixth tackle coming up. Will Edwards try a little chip kick? Well, and that's another tackle off the ball, I think. Edwards was knocked down. Referee being spoken to by the Great Britain skipper Mike Gregory. And Mr. McCallum having a word with Sorensen. And a penalty. Well, this is what you've got to judge here. What's Kurt Sorensen here? Does he take him after the ball? And that looked tight to me. And I don't know what Kurt Sorensen has to do, you know, to go in that sim bin. Well, at least he's allowed Grey Britain to gain 45 yards ground and Lachlan another 10 yards. We talk about discipline, Ray, you know, and uh, New Zealand had it last week, and this week they're showing they've not got it. And I think, Khalid, looking at this match, I think it's going to be the discipline side that wins it. Exactly. So, Great Britain on the attack again. Two points to nil in the lead. Gregory. And with only 12 men on either side, there's bound to be gaps out wide if this ball can be moved there. Edwards. Moves around to Platt. Back to Skerritt. Hume again. To New Love. Big lad this, only 18 years of age, from Featherstone Rovers. Only been 12 months in the game. Oh, that's a good ball from Edwards, the short ball that Alec Murphy was talking about. To Gregory, he's got into a fire. To Sean Edwards, he must score. That is wonderful rugby. Sleight of hand passing between Edwards and a fire. Quick thinking from Martin O'Fire, and look at the determination on Sean Edwards' face. What a difference this lad's made. Great Britain 6, New Zealand 0, and I must say, really deserving of it. And at last, something for British spectators to smile about. But of course, the key will be, can the 12 hold out against the 13, the longer we one in this game? Simple, basic rugby. Always keep the ball alive, keep it on the move. Andy Goodway to Andy Platt to David Hume. This is good football by Great Britain. Keep the ball going. Mike Gregory, now watch this thinking. Martin fire. this is tremendously quick-witted, quick thinking, and the man who's always in support, and this is a try Great Britain needed. And a very difficult kick from Lachlan. Out wide there on the touchline. He slots it round, but no. But nevertheless, six points to nil, and that will give heart to Great Britain. Well, you always say the longer you keep the ball alive, the more chance you've got of scoring. And this is what Great Britain did. Sean Edwards, who started it, finishes it. There's a little bit of a misunderstanding here, but Andy Platt's there, takes a good ball to David Hume, flops the ball over. Now, watch Martin at fire. Somebody said he can't tackle, he can tackle, he can think, and he can put tries on like this. That's just what Great Britain needed. And well done by Phil Ford again. Gregory. Great Britain reforming, but I think we'll see a big kick from Lachlan very, very shortly. Andy Platt's only looking uh, much lighter in the, uh, the number 10 position in the second row. And it's Little Freeman who's doing the shouting now, telling his Kiwi forwards to get in there. Hume. Not very well struck. Easily picked up by Williams. But I think the tackling's so different this week. Well, you can see, Ray, I think the tackling bags have been out and been out in force, and uh, Great Britain are doing it well. Shelford. Oh, and didn't Shelford get rid of it very quickly? That's a good run from Sorensen. He might be 33 years of age, this veteran player, but still a good player. Very hard man for Test Rugby.
Freeman. Shelford. Oh, well done by New Love. Good play. Shelford looks to be struggling, Alec, to me, with that groin. Yes, he is struggling, but having said that, Ray, young New Love, that'll do him a world of good. This is his first test, he's only a boy, and I'm sure that will bring him, bring him really big to the game. 25 minutes gone, six points to nil for Great Britain, the Lochran penalty, the Sean Edwards try. And Edwards dictating things here, that first receiver. Looking for Gregory, it's that short ball again. Couldn't get it away, but he's lost it. Hume. I think if it is a ball, Ray, that is the ball, the short one, you know, to a forward and running onto the man. Well, the physiotherapist, Jeff Plummer, got in the way there. Oh, good play. Big lad, this number six, Kelly Shelford, the Auckland captain, scored a try in the first test. These Kiwi forwards, Alec, not running with the dash we've expected. No, I think the little zip they had last week, I think you'll find out when Dwayne Mann comes back on, he'll start making a difference. Uh, he's the guy who goes from acting half pack, and he's, he's the thing that makes uh, everything tick. And there he is straight away, number nine. Spent his ten minutes in the Sinmin. Let's hope he's cooled down. Dean Bell. The Kiwi standing a little flat at the moment. These passes not really bringing men onto them, not really bringing people from depth. Sorensen to Shelford. Now then, that's better. Adrian Shelford. Little Freeman beginning to move. That's a good kick. He saw that Ophaya was standing flat. He saw that there was little on on the outside. And Gary Freeman, vice captain, man of the match last week. Good kick. I think the difference is, Ray, is looking at this New Zealand side, they, they look as though they're playing without uh, a centre, because um, Iroh always seemed to be left on his own. And it's significant he hasn't been running in like he did, has he? No, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't change him. Andy Goodway at standoff. Well, <laughs> I don't think many standoffs relish marking that number 11. Lachlan. He's a big lad, he can take away the ball from his own line. Edwards again trying to break up the Kiwi line from the acting half back position. Platt. That's a good run. David Hume following. And again was Lachlan tackled off the ball. The crowd roar, the crowd boo, Lachlan certainly got a knock to the jaw. And it was that little man, Freeman, again. A lot of him feeling out here, Alec. Yes, there is, and I think, uh, really, Ray, that uh, Mr McCallum really needs some assistance from both his touch judges, because there's some very, very late tackling uh, tackles going in. And there's some very powerful tackling, Alec, too. Shelford. And strong running. Back to Sam Stewart. Good run by Stewart and good support. There's that number nine again, Dwayne Mann. Played in two tests against Australia in the summer. Freeman to Shelford. New Love should have it. He hasn't. Oh, but well picked up by Lachlan. Well, that should be another six tackles. Referee, Mr McCallum, signifies it. Hume. Ooh. But he's got it back. David Hume, now then, has he got a fire? No, he hasn't. It's touch. Now, Stevie Hampson gets 10 metres sent off. Now, just watch young Freeman here. Does he go in? Mine, yeah, I think it was the shoulder. So, 
Freeman to put the ball in and certainly David Hume keeping him quiet at the moment <coughs> Hume in the first test of standoff here in his natural position at scrum half 30 minutes played, 6 points to nil for Great Britain, Williams oh and Newlock comes up with the ball had a good debut so far, Phil Ford I think Ray really that Phil Ford's got to stop running in that position surely that is a position for the forward Hume, Skerritt Sean Edwards at first receiver again short ball to Powell but Powell had stopped wasn't running from depth Hume ooh that was a risky ball <laughs> and the six tackle well David Hume had overrun the six tackle so it should be a handover to the Kiwis any infringement on the six tackle hand over to the opposition to Todd <laughs> 31 minutes in this first half and Great Britain still holding that lead six points to nil the Edwards try the Lachlan goal and not really had an attack from the Kiwis Plenty of talent here. Sherlock to Kelly Shelford. Oh. Well, it's an offside decision. Shelford taking the ball. You've got to start wondering also, Ray, about this, uh, the tactics of the New Zealand. They've got 13 men to 12, and they're playing it down the middle. They had a lot of success last week down the middle, but surely they'd be wiser to move it wide. And that's a sensible kick. In midfield, taking the tap, the win very, very difficult. Paul Hume, normally second row, has played half back, but was pressed into service on the 88 tour as hooker against Australia. To Platts, working well together, Platt and Edwards, two Wigan colleagues, but there's that man Sorensen again, tough as teak. That's a good chip. That is a good chip kick. It's difficult for Williams. He'll have to kick. Sensible play from Dara Williams. Well, this is the tactics of the Great Britain. The lovely little chip, Sean Edwards, and puts the pressure on Darren Williams. It's a last-ditch effort here. And certainly keeps the pressure on the Kiwis. Drop out under the post from Williams himself. Not a good one, straight to Goodway. Who almost knocks on. Luckily, still very dry up here at, at Allen Road, Leeds. Powell. And this really, Alec, is where I'd like to see Great Britain moving this ball. Yes, I think what they've got to do, the short ball pays off all the time. There he is, to Edwards, he's got a fire, and he's in! Well, Alec, Alec Murphy must be a mind reader. He said the short ball pays off all the time. And the 12-man Great Britain side have done it. Try for Martin O'Fire, his 19th try of the season. And already at the top of the try scoring charts. Ten points to nil for Great Britain. And New Zealand looking a sorry lot. We said the short ball pays off, and here it is, a lovely short ball to Kelvin Skerritt. Slipped it to Sean Edwards. Sean Edwards, Martin the fire. Good night, good try, and just what Great Britain needed. And leaving a simple kick again for Lachlan. But I do think Great Britain have got to get some points this half if they can. New Zealand uh, in a huddle, things not going well. And going worse, another two points. 12 points to nil for Great Britain. And at last the Lions are roaring again. Great disappointment last week at Old Trafford. We said about the short ball, this is what we mean. Inside, outside, and here it comes now. Bump, 
Knocks Kelvin Skerritt, knocks one off, knocks two off. Sean Edwards, Martin of Fire, easy. And I think uh, that showed you the force of Kelvin Skerritt's run. He actually knocked Sorensen off, didn't he? He did, and also running from deep helps and running into the gap, which we wasn't doing last week, but we are doing this week. Forward looks to turn a knock to his leg. Great Britain sensibly here now, working the way through two or three tackles, playing the short ball, taking it from acting half back. And I think the vital difference again in this game is retaining possession. In that first test, Great Britain lost far too much possession. And Sorensen again, he's certainly uh, stirring things up there. Edwards, dummy. Edwards making the difference, Alec. Well, the man who should have won all the game for me last week and certainly should have started the uh, first choice, he's a very, very good football player and he's making Great Britain tick. Now then, Iro to a fire. Just four minutes left in this first half. Great Britain 12, Kiwis nil, and certainly Great Britain will want to keep the Kiwis down here. Oh, that's a bad loss. Dowding, Gregory. Good running from Goodway. Certainly Andy Goodway got the pace to move into the backs to Platt. Bringing these Kiwi forwards in, remember, they have 13 men to 12. Great Britain have got to bring this pack into midfield if it's a create an overlap. But they won't do it like that, David. But that's the first real bad ball we've dropped in this half hour. Yes, we have. Possession's been very good. The angling's been very good. But looking on the blind side uh, there when that short ball was taken, it was wide open. I'm sure if Great Britain had spotted it, it was a certain try. And Kurt Shelford coming off. And they're seeing Faimalo coming on. Shelford being troubled with persistent groin injuries. Mr. McCallum from Sydney. Not very happy with that, but happier with that to Shelford. Good cover tackle by Hume. Copybook stuff, locking after the blind side. Sorensen. Faimalo, first touch of the ball. Had some good games in the club matches. New Zealand won five out of their seven matches, just losing to Wigan and St Helens. I think the difference today, though, Ray, is there was criticism very badly last week about uh, the tackling, but you can't criticise it this week to a man the tackling out of the skin. Certainly, Alec, when you think Great Britain have only got 12 men. Yes, and uh, that makes it all the more... Uh, Tremendous because uh, they are tackling well and they're supporting well and everybody's shouting for the ball. And that's good. Always oh, lost it. <laughs> I think what he's telling him, Ray, is that... Uh... Oh, that was bad. No need for Gary Freeman to be niggling, but no need for Andy Platt to strike out like that. And that could cost two points. <clears throat> I think we'll probably end up with a scrum. Mr. The referee, Mr. McCallum, having a word with the skipper, says, look, cut the niggling out. I think we've got to be honest and say, Ray, that uh, young Freeman, he's in everything. He's, uh, he's having a go at everybody. Freeman. I think he is, Alec. He's doing a lot more talking, but he's not playing the rugby this time, is he? No, he's not. And I think uh, if he played like he played last week, I forget about the niggling. Yes, he's doing a bit too much talk and a little bit too less rugby. Faimalo, Great Britain got to hold out here, they need this 12 points to nil cushion at half-time. Freeman, Bell, oh, that's a wild pass, no need for that. But Kiwi still keeping it going, Sam Stewart. Is it, is it runs into good tackling. And his helmet goes. Freeman to Sherlock. But you wouldn't think Great Britain had only 12 men on the cover, the forwards moving across. 
and none better there than the two Hume brothers. They're tackling everything. That's a good kick from Mercer. Oh, what's Phil Ford doing? But look at the man who's there again, David Hume. Acting as the sweeper, moving behind his pack. On to time, 40 minutes up now for the first half. And again, more problems. And it's the touch judge, Ray Tennant, having to go in there. I think you'll find out where the problem is. It's young Freeman again. He started the niddling, he started the tattling, and this fella is down here at number seven, right in the middle of it. That's where he started from, and that's where it started. He was the man, and he's the culprit. Yeah, there he is. And I think he's turning to knock himself, but certainly Phil Ford's out down there. It'll be interesting to see Mr. McCallum's stance. As Australian referees, they don't rush into the players, they move well away, but Ray Tennant had to move in. And he's off for ten minutes now. And certainly standing no messing. And Gary Freeman's on his way. He's protesting that he had a knock to the neck. Well, we've said, Ray, all along about this fella. For the last ten minutes, he's forgot about rugby. And I think when the coach gets him in at half time, I think he'll have a word in his ear and say, listen, get back to playing rugby and pack it in. Yes, and Ford definitely shaking up there. And certainly from New Zealand's point of view, as long as this lad, uh, Freeman, is yapping and niggling, Alec, it's good for Great Britain, isn't it? Yes, it is, and uh, what we need to do now is put some points, or put some more points on the board, because I think we're going to need them. Alan. And there's the Hooter. It's all over that first half. We've had shots. Play I think, Alec, with uh, Freeman in the sin bin for ten minutes, man off for ten minutes, not really a disciplined approach by these Kiwis. They, they've lost a numerical advantage, haven't they? Yes, they have. And, uh, Ray, I think what has happened in this little fella here, I think he'll be saying to you, now, listen, lads, we've done everything wrong in the first half. Let's get it right. Get your noses to the ground, and we'll talk about it. But I think in that dressing room, there's got to be a talk from the court saying, what's gone wrong with our discipline? Great Britain doing everything right, New Zealand doing everything wrong. And certainly a huge roar from the crowd for Great Britain. They certainly got behind them. The gallant 12, if they can hold out for 40 minutes. It's... A test of resolve, and I think it might be interesting, Alec, will Coach Mal really use some substitutions, or will that upset the rhythm of the play? Well, I think the way they're playing, I don't think there's any reason to bring any substitutions on. I think uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have to play with the ball and control the ball, and I think if we play like the way we've been playing, there's no reason why they shouldn't come away with a victory. And this is the man who's really been uh, working hard, hasn't he? In midfield, he scored one try, he's been instrumental in the other... What a difference he's proved. Well, he's the little dynamo. He, he sat on the bench for 56 minutes last week. It must have actually killed him. This week, he's done everything right. So, Kiwis trailing 12 points to nil. Great Britain, 12 men, and New Zealand, 12 at the moment. Gary Freeman in the sin bin. And a petulant, petty display from Freeman in the first half. It started with that dramatic Hampson sending off when Freeman really had no right to grab hold of Hampson but neither had Hampson any right to deal with him in the fashion that he did. I think that must be a good tactic, Ray. We've just witnessed there Paul Lachlan, just a little tap of the ball and it, and it sails 70 yards, so surely that must give great art to Great Britain. Yes, Alec, difficult to gauge the win here. One minute it seems to be coming down the field, the next minute it's uh, the other way. I think it's in Great Britain's favour, and I don't think there'll be uh, any lack of use of the wing. I think they should pin New Zealand back in their own 25. Shelford gone into first receiver in the absence of Freeman. And really the most dangerous player for New Zealand off the field. Lachlan letting the ball bounce comfortably. Well, he's getting himself in a little bother there, is Lachlan, choosing to run. Gregory. And Great Britain uh, taking a lot of the ball away from the acting half-back, the first receiver, driving six or seven yards, certainly playing a yardage game, going for position, and that's what Edwards is doing. 
keeping the momentum going forward. But he's annoyed at that kick. I think he wanted it to go further, Alec. Well, I don't think he's a typical half-back. He never thinks that goes right. And I think he's saying to himself, that's not good for me, Sean. But uh, he'll soon forget about it. Uh, for the people who wasn't listening, it wasn't French. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, let's hope no one was lip-reading. Anyway, it's Great Britain ball. The first against the head. Well picked up by Hume. But a bad pass. Edwards, that's a good pass to New Love. Looks a very confident lad, not, not quite got away, but uh, good sound, steady performance. Edwards again, wants to be in the play. To Hume, to a fire, what can he do? Always dangerous, this man, ex Roslyn partner of the Union, the witness flyer. Good way. That's a good tackle by his Wigan teammate, Dean Bell. Tap on the shoulder. Edwards again, a good kick, a punishing kick. Just look at that for precision. I don't think he'll. Uh, I don't think he'll use to need to use French in this case. I think you'll see a little smile. I think he'll say to himself, "That's better, Sean." Certainly, I was interested in his, his reaction after the match last week. He seemed to storm out of the dressing room. Well, the this end. is a tactician. This is a typically good half-back ploy. A beautiful flighty kick, a lovely kick and a lovely bounce. What a good effort. And it's a heel against the head. Great Britain looking to use the advantage here now. Mike Gregory, that's a good run. Oh, and a superb ball. Superb one-handed pass there to Lachlan. Three yards from this Kiwi line. But it was not a knock-on to Hume. New Zealand desperate here now. To Skerritt, driving for the post. 16 stone, Bradford Northern prop. Just 23 years of age, his second cap. To Gregory. Edwards, short ball to Platt, to Goodway, he's in! Oh yes, that's good rugby! Skillful rugby. Andy Goodwin racing through there, enjoying himself on his return to Test Rugby. He's been out for a couple of seasons, but it's the short pass again, the clever, quick combination working midfield. And that's disconcerting to New Zealand. The wigging combination, Edwards, Platt, Skerritt. This is a good, quick play of the ball here. There's no problem about this. This is very, very quick, a lovely play of the ball here. Here it comes, in you go. That's a nice play by Andy Goodway, like that. And I think that was some bad tackling from uh, Darrell Williams. He certainly should have put the shoulder in there. But Great Britain taking advantage of Freeman's absence. And Lachlan. Converts easily. 18 points to nil, three tries, Edwards a fire. And now good way and just 44 minutes gone. And just 12 men for Britain. Well, it makes you wonder how Sean Edwards stays on. A lovely ball from Gregory here. He holds the ball. Now, just look as good way. Planks onto this. There's no problem what he's going to do. Good try. What makes you wonder, Alec, is how we lost this first test with 13 men. Well, maybe we lose it there because we didn't do the things right, but uh, it makes it more interesting for the third and final test. Well, it's not over yet. There's 36 minutes yet, and I think that will be the crucial factor. Can this Great Britain side hold out? Have they got the stamina? Have they got the strength to keep it going? Well, I don't think there's been ever been a doubt about the fitness, Ray. They're superbly fit, some of these lads. Maybe they did a little bit too much training last week. So, Paul Hume. And I think, as I said... One of the prime factors in this match so far is that Great Britain are kicking well, kicking to the corners, punishing this fullback, and then when in possession, holding it well. <laughs> Good tackle there from Newell of almost like the old Cumberland throw that was current in the 40s and the 50s. And that's a tackle from Andy Platt, sent him scurrying back. Iro. And that's the first time we've seen Kevin Iroh in midfield in the match. Yes, it's the first time he's touched the ball, but doesn't it show you what a, a week can do to players? Last week, booed off the field because they couldn't tackle. This week, every time he touched the ball, a round of applause. Sherlock. To McGann. 
Hugh McGann moved out into the centre position, the skipper. Plays for Eastern Suburbs in Australia. Back to Shelford. Good ball, high ball, hovers in the wind, but bounces comfortably for Lachlan. One of the advantages of playing full-back is being six foot two, Alec. Yes, and he's also very strong when he's coming forward, Ray. He's a big lad and uh, he runs very hard with the ball. That. He's relishing the prop forward role. Yes, this is probably his best position. He, uh, he lacks a little bit of pace for second row, but certainly playing well at number 10. Roy Powell. Brought in for his defensive qualities. Good tackler, good grafting player. Will take the ball up at first receiver all day. Edwards again. Using the kick to the corners. Oh, Williams has left it. He's in trouble. He's certainly making uh, Darrell Williams run his Sean Edwards. He's sending him to the corners. He's keeping him there. What do you think he's saying, Ray? Is this, you think this is a new four men? Let's get the ball up there. Now, this is what it's all about. This is what international football is about. Somebody bossing the show, and this kid's doing it. Well, I think he wants this ball holding for four tackles, bringing back down. Steady it down. Platt on the blind side again. Looking for work is Andy Platt. Transferred to Wigan from St. Helens 15 months ago. £140,000 worth. New love. Hume. That's a good ball to Edwards. Oh, well, play on. And another six tackles. Kevin Iroh lost it. Great Britain need to hold this ball, keep possession to scare it. That's good play. Sending one or two forwards down the middle. <clears throat> and a second one. This is the four that I think Sean Edwards was signalling out. Yes, I think what you're going to say now is we're going to put him on a little bit more pressure here by putting the ball to the line. No. Looking for the short ball, but it's a penalty. Mike Gregory caught an elbow there in the chest. I think what Mr McCullen's saying to him, there was a bit of obstruction there, and, uh, you know, he's, he's... He's been right on the spot, Mr McCullen. I think uh, he's, he's doing the game very, very well. It's just a matter of pulling Gregory back and uh, just not even allowed to get in position. And Gary Freeman back on the field, and I'm sure that uh, coach Tony Gordon will have said, keep your mouth closed, lad. Mike Gregory saying, I'm all right, I'm OK, he <laughs> doesn't want to come off. It might be hard out there, it might be rough, it might be tough, but very few rugby league forwards want to leave the fray. And I think least of all, a captain of Great Britain. There's no way he'll come off the field voluntarily. I think Malcolm Rayle is uh, obviously thinking, like, I've got fresh men on the bench, and uh, Gregory, under no <laughs> illusions that he's the man to come off, and he's saying, listen, I'm the skipper, I'm staying on. It's a difficult decision, that, though, Alec. You know, do you lose the momentum that's going on, or do you bring fresh men on when people are tired? I think that's a decision he's going to have to make very, very shortly. Yes, well, I, I would leave it for the next five minutes and then think about it then. So, Lachlan on the 25-yard line, just 10 yards in. But not conditions conducive for goal kickers. Tried to flight it round, doesn't get there. So, still Great Britain leading, 18 points to nil. But even so, Ray, the kick, you know, keeps Great Britain with the ball, and that's what they need. They need possession, because with 12 men, that's going to be a very important factor. Back to Lachlan. Had a good game at full-back. Oh, good run. He seems to have time, Alex, to come running in from depth at full-back. Yeah, it's a nice uh, position to be in when you can play a top-class centre and, and do the same at full-back, Ray. Hume.
Edwards again. And the kick. And a fire. But Williams underneath it this time, judging it well to Kevin Iro. Now we saw his try in the closing minutes at Old Trafford when he went through Goodway's tackle, but not going through Goodway's tackle today. There's a different spirit abroad. This <laughs> Iro raced through three tackles, showed contempt to Grey Britain, but not this afternoon. Edwards and Iro. New love. Now then, he's got space. Had to cut inside, had to cut inside. The cover was going across deep. Retains the ball. That's the crucial element at the moment in this match. Power. And a quick play of the ball. I think the secret is the Ray, isn't it? The short ball. That is the secret. Every time they take the ball to the New Zealand men, there's a big gap there. And really, I think New Zealand not offered any attacking move whatsoever. So no, far. they look uh, very, very devoid of ideas. Uh, you know, they just look as though they've took uh, everything for granted, like maybe Great Bin did last week. So Freeman to put the ball in. Mr. McCallum not happy with that. He wants to scrum parallel to the touchline. That's what it must be in the law. And a good heel, but he's lost it, and that's offside. Yes. Humagan, silly there by Humagan, the skipper. Freeman lost the ball at the back of the scrum. Humagan getting up from the loose fall position, just kicked it away. I think this is going to be an interesting decision. Uh, Ray, what do you do here? Do you keep him under pressure, put him in the corner, do you kick a goal? Personally, I'd put them in the corner. Like, I wouldn't go for a goal because I think the, the wind is so difficult, it's a lottery. Well, I think he'll kick for goal because I think uh, 20 points, three tries, Ray, 18, and two points for the goal makes it 20. They've got to score four times, and they're not capable of doing that. Well, I'm afraid you've got it wrong, Alec. He's gone for touch. Well, me and Malcolm never did agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gregory. Skerritt. That's a powerful plunge. Platt. Those short legs of Andy Platt really going, firing all pistons. Hume. But well read, well read by Hume again. And Dwayne Mann spotted the problem. And Sean Edwards said, what are you doing? Gregory again. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Kurt. Sean Edwards' little kick. Lachlan, tempted drop. That should be another six tacklers if Phil Ford gathers, he does. Comes inside. To Hume. And Paul Hume. Sensible play. 25 minutes to go. Still Great Britain, 18. New Zealand, nil. Great Britain, of course, 12 men to 13. And this boy Skerritt coming into his own now as a test player, Alec. Played very, very well, doing a lot of work, and I think now with Great Britain start moving the ball out wide, one or two of these New Zealand lads look a little bit tired. That's all, oh, that was a beautiful pass. Unfortunately, Andy Goodway couldn't take it, but that was classic rugby from, from Sean Edwards. It's all about uh, being confident, Ray, and when everything's going right, there's no better player than Sean Edwards. He knows the short ball is the, is the big thing, and he's, uh, he's continually doing it. So, scrum down. Skerritt. Well, this is it. Now, watch the ball. A beautiful ball. If you're taking this, it's under the sticks. Freeman. And Lachlan moved up on the blind side there from the full-back position. Good tackle. <laughs> but certainly they're looking after this little lad. It'll be interesting. And he doesn't like it, does he? No, he doesn't, Ray. And it'll be interesting tomorrow to see the headlines because these fellas took a slate in last week for not being able to tackle. And this week, they probably turned the tables. Shelford. Faimalo. And those two lads, 9 and 10. Platt and Hume have been in the thick of things. Kurt Sorensen. Needs a powerful run from him if the Kiwis are to come into it.
the six tackle Freeman electing to run Shelford well that's an interesting kick <laughs> Lachlan very very cool there. a little bit too cool I think Alan. yes I think he expected the wingman being back but uh, he took it well and uh, certainly saved the situation Skerritt. Hugh McGann, number 13 for the Kiwis. Interesting to see him coming in from the one or two out wide, cutting off the ball supply to the Great Britain wings. He's there again. All oh, good gummy to Paul Hume. But a knock on. Sam Stewart favouring his. Australian headgear, like a boxer's headgear, number 12. Very, very popular in Australia, of course, the ground's very, very hard if you bang your head on them. New Zealand head and ball. <laughs> and certainly David Hume, letting Freeman know who's at scrum half today. I think there's been a thing in the paper about who was going to keep Mr. Freeman down and uh, to put David Hume to give him that job, and now he's at it again. He's had a little bit of a word with uh, David Hume, and he's got another penalty. And you think, do you think this could be deliberate tactics by Great Britain of niggling or upsetting this lad? Because certainly he's gone off his game, hasn't he? Well, he's gone off his game, but everything he's done, Ray, I mean, it's a, he's a professional rugby league player, and this fella should know better. He's lost his cool, and he really knows it, and he doesn't know what to do. Well, Paul Lachlan knows what to do, he gets it in that corner, it's Great Britain on the attack again, 18 points to nil. Not really suffering with the one-man deficit. In fact, looking livelier, looking sharper than the Kiwi pack. Hume. Had a good game today, David, really out of sorts in the standoff position in the Old Trafford test and another ter another penalty I can't believe that Ray Gary Mercer actually there the number five is saying he bit me I cannot believe that he put his arm in his mouth probably but I cannot believe the other thing well Lachlan is he going to go for goal he is now Ray and what I was telling you before was exactly right because this two points is very, very important. Great Britain are 18 points in front. This goal is going to kick. We'll put us clear. I knew you'd have the last word. <laughs> Just the mound of sand being arranged. The Great Britain certainly being favoured at the hands of referee Greg McCallum. Uh, so far, ten penalties in their favour to New Zealand's one, but of course that shows the indiscipline of this New Zealand side. Oh, it's well struck, it's there, it's two points. It takes Britain now further in the lead, 20 points to nil. And a considerable breathing space now. It's also make it uh, more important really, that it'll give Great Britain just that little bit of uh, help they need in knowing that Great, uh, New Zealand's got to score four times to win the game. So Gregory, led by example this afternoon, possibly a little nervous in his first test, possibly lacking a little confidence, but certainly not here at Allen Road. But this man's not lacked confidence, Kelvin Skerritt. <laughs> nephew of Trevor Skerritt. Again, another test cap. And there was a lot of criticism about Paul Hume coming in and hooker again, but he certainly paid off, Alec, hasn't well, he? Well, I think all the forwards have played well. I think there's got to be no complaint from anybody. Everybody in the side has done the, the little bit this week, and they should be proud of him. And just look at the British players up there. Three, six, nine players waiting for poor Williams. <laughs> and look at the man who it is, it's Andy Goodway. Try scorer, tackler. 
<laughs> Martin of fire in the tackling though. Well, they accused him last week of missing Kevin Idol. I think then he said, I'm not going to miss you this time. Shelford, Dean Bell. And really, New Zealand not making anything of this new medical advantage. 13 men to 12. Put themselves playing it down the middle. They look as though they're lacking of ideas. Uh, from the New Zealand, who was doing everything right last week, are doing everything wrong this week. Sam Stewart. But of course, they have played some entertaining rugby already this season. The crowd's 15% up on this New Zealand tour. This is better. McGann. Oh. Is he going to say play on? No, he doesn't. The handover on the sixth tackle. <laughs> Powell. Just 17 minutes left in the match, and Edwards certainly keeping the pressure on this lad Williams. Great Britain quite content to play down here. I don't think they're too bothered whether they have possession or whether New Zealand have it, as long as they're around this Kiwi 25 yard. Oh, he's lost it. Good tackling by Ford. They accused Great Britain of being overconfident last week. Do you think New Zealand were a little overconfident this week? Well, I it? think uh, not really, Ray. I think really New Zealand have probably been outplayed today. I think Great Britain have played to the form. Uh, they was made favourites to win this series, and really uh, they've played exceptionally well. I think the, I think the tackle bags have been out this week, and uh, obviously it's a good effect. And David Hobbs, Bradford Northern, prop forward coming on for Great Britain and number 14 Tony Kemp for New Zealand I don't think there are any injuries I think it's just a change of emphasis it's just a rest for players Freeman long ball to McGann that's a good ball to Gary Mercer now then has he got the pace on Ford he hasn't but little Freeman's there to McGann now that's good rugby and that's what New Zealand should have been doing. A try, a formality under the post there for Hume again. And significant that for once, Freeman elected to play rugby. He moved out wide, McGann was found there, and that try was a formality. So, 20 points to four, and can New Zealand come back? Just 15 minutes to go. This kick from Sherlock, important. Not proved the best of kickers to date, but that's no problem. Two points. So the gap narrows, 14 points difference. 13 players to 12 in New Zealand's favour and 15 minutes to go. They're probably saying, why couldn't we do this in the first place? Gary Mercer here, streaks down the field. This is very, very good football here. A lovely ball into Freeman here. And Hugh McGann has the simplest of running. Good try, good football, and needed a foul, New Zealand was concerned. And again, this is a lovely ball out here to Gary Mercer. He does well to go down the wing. He looks as though he's going to be tackled. A lovely ball back inside, and here he comes, little Freeman. Good ball. Good try, and it's about time for New Zealand. And in the meantime, Trevor Skerritt limping off for Grey Britain and Hobbs there, the tackler, coming on. Kurt Sherlock going off for New Zealand and Tony Kemp, the youngster, currently with Doncaster, moving to the centre. So David Hobbs up to his prop forward position. Open side, one Bradford Northern player replacing another. Oh, that's kick back, that's bad play. He's got the... Good way. And Great Britain got to keep the ball, got to 
keep this ball from the Kiwis because the Kiwis will certainly be desperate. They'll move it wide now. Powell. I think they'll be thinking, why haven't we used this extra man? They've had, uh, you know, they've had uh, 13 men to 12. And uh, really, all they've had to do is move the ball out wide. But give Great Britain uh, credit. They've closed them down and they've played some tremendous football. Yeah. They've got 13 minutes to hang in there, Great Britain. And the sixth tackle. Edwards moves to the right. Looking for a kick to the corner, but he doesn't. Hume does. And again, good tactical play. I think there's been a lot of good thinking, Ray, hasn't there, from the Great Britain side. I think yeah. we've, we've verted the game very well. Shelford. Could be one or two tired legs out there now, though, Alec. Yes, but they're, they're only young fellas, and surely the, 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 the thought of uh, beating the Kiwis will surely keep them going. Brent Todd. New Zealand really got to get the ball right down to the other end. Dean Bell. Now we've not seen a lot of uh, both uh, New Zealand centres. You know, they've been bo both well contained. Sam Stewart going back into trouble. Faimalo finding more trouble. Sorensen, now he is a lad who likes trouble. <laughs> but no, a slip. <laughs> oh, it's a charge down. Can Goodway make it? He will do. Yes! A charge down. Huge grin on his face. And that surely has sunk the Kiwis. Just when there might have been a doubt at coming back. This man who moved into the backs had a magnificent afternoon, charged the kick down, juggled it well and got the try. It's quoted as saying, I want to be the best forward in the world. Good charge down. My man of the match, this fella. Sean Edwards played well, but so has this fella. Picks it up, little bit of the Stanley Matthews. Good try. And I think that shows how eager these uh, Great Britain forwards have been. I think in the first test, no forward would have been there, but Goodway was there. He went to the tackle and took advantage of the slip. Good try, 24 points to six. And surely this goal for Lachlan, a formality. It is. Lachlan goal, 26 points to six. Well, that's what it's all about. Now, look how look complacent he was. Williams took his eye off the ball. Andy Goodway didn't. Chips it forward. Keeps his eye. He's not going to miss that, is he? He did well to kick that. I thought for one off a minute he was going to bend down and try to pick it up, and no, he was spinning about, wasn't he? Never in doubt. He was always going to score that try, and I think uh, he's had a tremendous game. My man of the match. And there he is, bringing the ball out of defence. And certainly before the game, a lot of the pundits were saying that uh, had Mal really kept his faith too long with a lot of these players, but certainly his trust has been justified. Nine minutes to go. And Great Britain, despite 12 men looking the faster, looking the fitter side. I think there's been a difference there this week, Ray, where they've took the ball to the New Zealanders. Last week they stood and watched, this week they're changing all the tactics. Lachlan. And a good kicking game, Alec, hasn't it? The long balls from Lachlan and the short chips of the corners from Hume and Edwards. Yes, we've done the game very well. We've listened to, obviously, what's been said in the dressing room. We've gone on the park and carried it out. And they've made this pool. I'd have a nightmare. <laughs> Williams. Mercer. Shelford. There's not a uh, lot of these New Zealand lads, Ray, look as though they want to run with the ball now, and uh, it makes you wonder who is going to do the damage, if anybody.
Kiwis trying to open the ball out. Well, there's another charge down, perhaps. It's Great Britain ball. Six tackles. Paul Izzy. 16 there. Derek Fox. Looking to be brought on, I think. Dean Bell. No way through. Paul Newell have looked after Bell this afternoon. I think that uh, young boy has made a good debut there. He's only, he's only 18 years of age and I think he'll be very proud of uh, his first test match. To Freeman. Shelford. The Kiwis playing some flowing rugby now, but could it be too late? Kemp. Good tackle by O'Fire. Iro shrugs off one man. I think that uh, this fella, Kevin Iro, is a big lad and uh, totally wasted on the wing. Surely he's a better centre. Sorensen. Good ball to Sam Stewart, but there's no centre there. Dean Bell should have been outside him. Here's this little boy, Freeman again, to Faimalo. This is a good run. That's good rugby. And good support play from Asim Faimalo. But the sixth tackle, the handover. Gregory giving his forwards a rest. Just over six minutes. David Hobbs substitutes. 26 points to six for Great Britain. A tremendous win in face of the difficulties. And Kevin Iro got a knock in that previous tackle. Possibly a little bit too late in the game to put stitches in. Lachlan. Again, the long kick, 60, 70 yards downfield. Well taken by Williams. But it's the position that Great Britain won. That's the position, deep in the Kiwis' half. And also uh, the good tackling, and that's what uh, was lacking last week, but not been lacking this week. I think the Great Britain lads have played tremendous football and tackled superbly. Bell to Kemp. New Zealand opening out play now. Freeman, good ball to Sorensen, a better ball to Dean Bell. But a knock on. And this is the sort of thing that New Zealand should have been doing half an hour ago. Well, I, mean. I think what they'll do when they get back to the hotel raid, it's obviously back to the, uh, to the drawing board for New Zealand, but they look at this video and said, why didn't we start doing this earlier on? And David Hume coming off. What a fine game this lad's had. Tackling, distributing. And let's not forget his kicking. Good round of applause. And little Derek Fox, the Featherston Rovers, scrum half coming on. And, and there's five minutes left for Fox to impress. Nine caps, getting his tenth cap here today. That's a tricky kick for Mercer. And that's the good thing, Ray. Not only the kick, which is important, but also the chase. Kemp. Good ball. <laughs> Indecision there from New Zealand. Freeman been very heavily policed by Luke's forward Mike Gregory and scrum half David Hume Williams looking for Iro can't find him well I think we must compliment Martin O'Fire on his defence today Alec he well, certainly I, put himself about I think you can compliment everybody I think it's been a tremendous performance throughout I think everybody's done the job and done it well by Marlo, that's good Kelly Shelford, oh, well taken by Fox. That ball intended for Kurt Sorensen, intercepted by Fox. 
And I think the, the most important part, Ray, and, and we've, we forgot really to mention it, Great Britain have been playing all the match with 12 men, so that's a truly magnificent performance. Hobbs to a fire. Chose to, to come inside, should have gone outside. Good way again. What a strong running game this lad's had. Just three minutes left. Still wanting to take the ball up. Fox. And the rain now sweeping in. Williams is first. The wind howling down here now with Allen Road and Derek Fox there taking advantage of it. Brent Todd. <laughs> Certainly, Alec, this Great Britain winning here today sets us up for Central Park in a fortnight's time for the deciding test, doesn't it? Yes, I think uh, get you. Get your tickets early, uh, gentlemen, because I think a full house will be expected. A tremendous game in prospect, and let's have you down there. And, of course, Alec, uh, a World Cup match, the start of the next World Cup series. There's two points at stake. Yes, uh, the World Cup also, but also the, the clinching of the series, which we've not won for uh, nine years, so that is also another important thing. Great Britain ball again. Lachlan. Number six there, uh, Sean Edwards, the man of the match, wins a decanter and £250, and it must have been a very, very short vote between him and Andy Goodway. But what a fine game the Wigan standoff has had. I think he, uh, he looked back and say, uh, I have played well, and so has my colleague Andy Goodway. There is Goodway. Edwards. Well, a well-meant pass taken by Dean Bell. This been a vital win for Great Britain coach Mal really been proved right in not panicking with his selection plans after that first test defeat by 24 points to 16 the players returned the faith he put in them <coughs> and it's Newlove again storming down the middle now then good way he's got a fire on the outside he puts the kick in Oh, he just goes in touch, he throws his hands up. And with 30 seconds to go, fires second try, goes begging. But is this man dangerous? People say, why is this for a good player? I'll tell you why he's a good player, because he thinks, and thinks very well, and this is almost another try. Darrell Williams running out there, really tired. He knows it's all over. The Kiwis felt they were going to wrap up this test series here at Ellen Road. It hasn't happened. There's the hooter. It's all over. A wonderful performance from 12 Great Britain men. That third test decided at Wigan should attract a full house. We'll be here on Grandstand on November 11th. Sean Edwards, the man of the match, and I'm sure he'll be there. I hope you can join us then. Great Britain 26, New Zealand 6. Very good victory for the uh, 12 men, the decider in two weeks' time here on Grandstand.